Hi, this is Father David Zerilli with our Gospel Reflection for today, Monday of the fourth week of Lent. Our Gospel today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 4. At that time, Jesus left Samaria for Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his native place. When he came into Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all he had done in Jerusalem at the feast. For they themselves had gone to the feast. Then he returned to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine. Now there was a royal official whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, Come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go. Your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said to him and left. While the man was on his way back, his slaves met him and told him that his boy would live. He asked him when he began to recover. They told him, The fever left him yesterday, about one in the afternoon. The father realized that just at that time, Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And he and his whole household came to believe. Now this was the second sign Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, and what a beautiful little uh, little article that we have today, a little Gospel reading. Uh, and it is an interesting parallel at work here. Uh, we're in chapter 4 of the Gospel of John, and this is the second time already that Jesus has visited the little village of Cana. Uh, I, I saw it a couple months ago. It is quite small. Uh, it was just a little village. And the first time he went to Cana was back in chapter 2, when he attended a wedding and famously performed his first miracle, uh, changing water into wine. But notice the parallels between those, both those two visits to, to Cana. The first time Jesus, the first time Jesus uh, went, he was initially reluctant to perform the miracle at the wedding. And the same thing happens here. Jesus is reluctant to accede to the royal official's request. Another parable is the persistence of the petition. Back at the wedding, it was the Virgin Mary herself who persisted in making the request. And here, the royal official pleads a second time for the life of his son. In both cases, such persistence demonstrates faith. And throughout this whole reading in this section of John, in this, this whole few, first few chapters, we begin to understand the lesson that John is trying to get across to us, that Jesus is after authentic faith. I mean, how many times have we seen in the Gospels the Lord's reluctance uh, to be known as a, as a wonder worker, right? Uh, and that's not why he came, and it's a poor basis for belief. Jesus refuses to be treated as, as some type of a divine vending machine, right? It would have, uh, it was, it, we see that in his first words to the royal official, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. They were, they were treating him like that wonder worker, right? But the man persists, and Jesus must have known the man's heart and its, his sincerity. And by the way, uh, what the man is asking for is not a small thing. Uh, he wanted Jesus to come down to Capernaum, uh, to heal his son, and that was quite a journey back then. Uh, it's about 20 miles from Cana uh, to Capernaum through quite mountainous terrain. It would have taken the man all day, uh, maybe longer, two days, to, to walk from Capernaum down to Cana just to find Jesus and make his request. And thus we can see, as Jesus did, uh, the beginnings of the man's faith and the seriousness of his request. And that man's faith is evident when Jesus simply tells him, You may go. Your son will live. And the man left, right? He trusted the word of the Lord. He, he didn't need Jesus to physically walk two days and touch his son. Uh, the man believed in the power of his word. And indeed, as we saw, uh, his belief is later confirmed when the man learns that his son recovered at the very moment that Jesus spoke. There's a story about St. Louis who was the king of France during the 13th century. He was a man of profound Eucharistic faith. And it was said that uh, one day, one of his courtiers 
burst into the king's chambers to describe to him a miracle that had happened. He said, uh, Sire, the infant Jesus is appearing in the host upon the altar in the royal chapel. Come and see. And the saintly king calmly responded, I do not need to see it. I already believe most firmly in the Lord's presence in the Eucharist, in his word. Seeing a miracle would not make me believe more. It's that type of faith, authentic faith, right? Demonstrated by the royal official in the gospel and demonstrated by the royal King Louis himself. That type of authentic faith that Jesus is after. We do well to pray for that gift of faith and to put it into practice, especially in these times. Amen.